Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... This is James Olin. I'm the head of Archetype Studios and an enormous Dungeons and Dragons fan who uses his spare time to uh, put together uh, books. James, you're, I followed your work for a long time. I played Baldur's Gate, I've, I've played uh, Dragon Age, um, and it's just uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I also supported this, which is a phenomenal oh, yeah. book one of the best third party source book for fifth edition D D that i've that i've ever seen I, I still it's still amazing work so yes today viewers we're going to talk about their latest work uh chains of asmodeus and i have to say i'm, I'm really surprised this came out because i, I forgot who i talked to in Arganum worlds but they mentioned that um the the team was moving on to uh to focus more on video games part of me was a little sad because i was like oh i want to see more of their work you know more more adventures coming out so seeing this, I was so excited. If I may ask, how, how did this work come about? When you're the, so I'm used to kind of getting into the, doing a lot of the creative work on on um, video games, but it's um, in the case of modern video games, they're huge, involve hundreds of people, and I need to be very careful not to be disempowering members of my team, which means I have to be very careful about any creative efforts I'm putting into it, which but I have um, this desire to be creating. So I decided to get that energy out by doing books on the side. So I, where I don't have to worry about like, well, that's going to cost $10 million. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I can do whatever I want. And that's kind of the, the, it's just a chance for me to be creative. And I love Dungeons and Dragons, um, but uh, and it's a chance for me to make more Dungeons and Dragons content. And, um, you know, Wizards of the Coast has allowed me to to do this, so that's uh, that's awesome. So, what is Chains of Asmodeus? Is this a, in a way, a, like a, a a sequel sort to the Center Avenus that came out a few years ago? Is this um, is this Forgotten Realms related? What what is what is the main story behind this? It is kind of uh, two things. It's one, it's an adventure that is a high level adventure that takes you through all nine levels of hell but two it's also a source book for the hells so it describes every level of hell it gives you an adventure site in every level of hell details out all the arch devils details out a bunch of new monsters and artifacts and magic items and a corruption system and uh yeah that's what it's it's really just the reason i chose that subject matter is because i know that um well, people love the nine hells, but there never really has been an adventure that takes you through all of them. At least not like a, I'm sure that there have been adventures, but nothing that's um, famous or like grab, you know, as, as lasted through the, the years. And I'm like, all right, well, that's a good place to um, put my energies into. I have access to all these amazing artists and writers, and um, it's a chance to just organize, get them to start producing amazing content. And I, I didn't know. Um, Adrian Tchaikovsky is an amazing author, pumps out novels all the time. And I found out that he was a fan of Dungeons and Dragons. He plays twice a week. And I was like, hey, Adrian, do you want to do a Dungeons and Dragons book? And he was all up for it. So I was like, yes. And then um, I got a lot of uh, artists that I had worked with either on Odyssey, but also on other stuff that I can't talk about, but like uh, to, to work on chains of asmodeus i had um uh one of my favorite artists i was able to convince him to work on the project because of adrian because he was like what he has a job in a totally different studio but he does side stuff and and he was like i'll totally illustrate all of the adrian stuff i was like that's great um that was uh sergey sarachev he's just freaking amazing when you when you get the pdf um you know he does all of the um location art for the the adventure locations on each level of hell and then um, I also work on the video game side with a company called Aaron Sims, which they do concept work um, for major Hollywood studios. Like they designed the Stranger Things monsters and um, they did Wonder Woman and a whole bunch of other movies that you've seen. And uh, anyways, they're also Dungeons and Dragons fans. So I was like, OK, are you willing to uh, illustrate each of the arch devils? I can't like uh, I, I need you to give me a price that is doable for a book. Um, and they did because they're giant fans and they whipped out those arch devils 
um, you know, fast because they did. They had they were just so passionate about it. And um, yeah, I've been sitting on this art for some of the art. I think I was out was done two years ago. So it's been I've been waiting to be able to share all of this amazing content with the public. And you know, being able to make money for charity is also great. So it's kind of um, it kind of it allows me to uh, get my creative energies out. It allows all these artists and writers to, you know, create D and D work that people can enjoy. And then for fans, they get to, you know, they get a product out of it and then it generates, like, it just seems like a win, win, win. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been a good experience. It's great that there's lore for fifth edition ED about the nine hells. I've been waiting for something like this for a good amount of years. Um, but for players, players love, you know, options, magic items, and uh, possibly uh, subclass options, things like that. Um, does this book offer anything like that as well? Um, no, it stays away from adding subclasses and uh, races. It does give a lot of options for um, players to use as hooks into the um, the story. When I I hold a um, you know, Curse of Strahd is is probably the best fifth edition adventure and you know ravenloft is one of the best first edition it's uh i kind of hold it as the exemplar that everything's measured against and one of the great things they did you know tracy hickman who i feel is like the second father of dungeons and dragons but one of the great things he did was um the ability to play the uh adventure over again um and have it play differently because of the tarot reading you get and um so i wanted to do something similar and but instead of it's not cards it's more the players choose why they're going to hell because asmodeus has essentially stolen a soul that's important to you it can be your soul or it can be the soul of a loved one like your wife or husband or your son or daughter or your best friend and so you get to choose that and that changes what you are going to need to do when you go on the adventure then the party has to choose between three um factions three group patrons and one is the good uh, group patron and others are neutral and one's the evil and the the good one is the hell riders of al because you know they were instrumental in the story of um baldur's gate descend to avernus then the neutral one is the mages of hal rua um you know hal rua has always been a an interesting nation within the forgotten realms and then the evil one is the death stalkers of ball with saravok as it's like a representative so it's just uh so that's kind of the and the one whichever faction you choose changes what you're doing in the story with the factions each of them is once is able to help you get the soul that's important to you but you also have to do something for them because well each faction has a different get into spoilers but um i could talk about that for the entire interview so i'll i'll move on <laughs> but um yeah i also i i don't um i i like uh my love is creating adventures um not like uh new rules or anything like that i, I like the setting um part of it and the adventure part and all and how designing it and getting it to, to work well um but i'm not as big a fan of uh you know creating new rules and all that i don't, I don't think it's my like strength so i i try to stick to my strengths okay okay so would I, would you say that the way the adventures are laid out in each chapter and wow this this is a this is a big book this is like almost three hundred pages of 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 information, um, but would you say that the way the chapters and and the adventures laid out is very similar to the Odyssey of the Dragon Lords book that came out a few years ago? Um, uh, yes, but it's also different in that I wanted it to be uh, modular so that. Okay, here's the the problem with high level campaigns is the in writing a high level campaign is that when you're writing an adventure for you know first to tenth level characters or fifth to twelve or whichever, um, as a writer you know okay it's going to be a party of adventures and they're going to you know you don't have to worry about the origin of the players being too complicated. But when you get into high levels, campaigns can go all over the place. Maybe the characters have now rule a kingdom and they have all their responsibilities and. Well, that doesn't really fit with the high-level adventure. So if you are in a situation where the story in the, like, in Change of Asmodee doesn't work for you, you can still use the book as a source book for the hells with all these adventure locations, and you can come up with your own adventure to um, to work with it. If I may ask, is there a, a, a favorite setting within the Nine Hells that's uh, close to your heart? 
You mean um, adventure or one of the levels? Um, either or. The only um, the thing that uh, is fun, like, that I uh, my childhood self always remembers is that picture in the player's handbook of the paladin in hell, like uh, fighting off. Um, I think it's a um, ice devil. Do you know what picture I'm talking about? Yeah, that one from the one e days. Yeah, that's a that's yep. a great. Uh, yes. So I had I had one of the artists. Um, actually, th there's a, a full page piece of art that's basically just um, you know in, inspired by that, and uh, you'll you'll find it quickly when you're flipping through. But I would say that's the thing that um, I always remember about um, the nine hells, and uh, yeah. And I see you have also a great number of uh, N NPCs. And 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 uh, you get you have fleshed out all the, uh, uh, the the main the main the main bad guys in the nine hells. Um, any of them, if I may say, well, were any of them more fun to write than the rest? Is there anyone that really stuck out to you? Well, it, in terms of arch devils, I've always liked Mephistopheles, um, and I think that's just because when I first got into Dungeons and Dragons, well, my first the first adventure I ever did was Keep on the Borderlands. The dungeon master, way back, that was when I was 11 or whatever, you know, 11 years old. And um, at some point when we got higher level, uh, Mephistopheles became our kind of like uber villain. So I've always had a, you know, since 11 years old, I know of Mephistopheles. He's kind of uh, my favorite, I would say. What do you think is about the Nine Hells that, um, which, you know, it's interesting, like when you talk to other, other players and other game masters, dungeon masters about the Nine Hells, it's something that, uh, as players, we love to go to. We want to adventure. We want to defeat them. Um, what do you think about the setting that's so special to uh, Dungeon Dragon players? It's uh, it's basically Gagax obviously just took um, you know Dante's Inferno and turned it into um, the Nine Hells, and I think it just resonates with Western culture. You know, is derived a lot of it is derived from Judeo Christian, you know, mythology and, and it's, it's that kind of mythology. So it just, um, you just react to it because it, it speaks to you in that, um, it's familiar. It's, you know, it's the hells and it's like uh, layered where, you know, you have to basically, it's almost like a dungeon from the first level of hell to the ninth. Level. And each time you know, like there's a different boss and, um, it feels different. So I don't know. It's, um, I think that's why it speaks to people. There's, you know, and there's a, Unlike the abyss with the demons, it's just like chaos and evil there. Hell, the hells have organizations and rules, and it's a place where you can have an adventure and actually role play. Um, you know, it's hard to role play in some place like the abyss because the demons is going to eat your face as soon as you start talking to it. But in the hells, you know, you can actually interact with devils because the devils um, want to corrupt you. They don't, they might want to kill you as well, but like uh, there's, there's um, a lot more chance for role playing in, in the nine hells. And I think that also, adds to its appeal hmm. if, if i may ask if i were to run this and you were one of my, one of my players uh what character would you roll up for this oh hmm that's uh i never i'm always a dungeon master so it's like um uh i'd go with the wizard because i just love the wizards and uh you know it's uh you probably need all those spells to survive the nine hells <laughs> okay excellent excellent so would you say that this is a uh... For those hearing about this for the first time, this is a would you say this is like level five to level fifteen adventure? What 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 level should you start out with playing this source using the source book? Oh, it's um it's actually starts at eleven level eleven to twenty. So it is um you can actually use it as a direct sequel to Descent and Tavernus. So because your character should be about eleventh twelfth when they end that adventure, and then this adventure picks up right, right from there. The thing is, it also you can because most. Uh, Wizards of the Coast Ventures end in the 11th to 12th range. Um, it works good as a um, high-level adventure after any of those. So that's, um, yeah. Oh, that's that's excellent. I, 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 there's not too many, well, it makes sense. It's hell. It should be a, a very difficult uh, campaign. Um, oh, excellent. Is there is there anything more about this I haven't asked or you want to share? I would just say... The thing I'm most proud about the book is is the work of the like the the artists just created some amazingly beautiful art. Like when you flip through it, it's almost just awesome as a as an art book. And then and then Adrian's ideas are like he had so many ideas. <laughs> like um, it, it's uh, that's the stuff I I think people are really going to enjoy just digging into all the craziness that Adrian has come up with on each of the levels and then enjoying the gorgeous art 
But I should also say that I, I knew I knew what fans were going to focus on, like the thing that would get them the most excited. And if you go to the um, any of the Reddit chats, um, it becomes evident that the statistics of the nine art levels are what people really, really want to see, in particular Asmodeus. Um, so, you know, you get that and you get the the art for them is phenomenal because that's from Aaron Simmons at each one of them. And just wow, you'll you'll uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And now this is a this is available in PDF. Is there any future plans for a uh, printed copy? Um, um, do you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, we want. Oh, yeah, we wanted to launch the print on demand when we launched it, but that would, it, we're still working on that. And Halloween was a good a good chance, a good time to launch you know, this book. It, and it's also it means it can generate um, you know the uh, money for charity earlier. But the print on demand should be this month. I think there's a good chance. I'm not promising this because it's it's not going to be me that's going to be doing the work. But I think Roll Twenty is very excited about um, doing a version. So I give that a uh, high percentage chance of happening. I don't know how long that would take though, because again, I'm not. I wouldn't be involved in it. Oh, okay. And 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 um, one one last question. Um, well, sort of last question. Um, do you see? Do you see? Uh, that it, would there be in your mind? Do you, do you see more stories coming out of this from you about the setting? Do you see like maybe a, a purgatory? Oh, I think um, just I think I got out everything that I'm going to say about the hells because it's like uh, you know it was it's been years of my life. So the next thing I do will have to be something completely different and new. That's I like to because it's it is kind of um a passion project, and, and mm. I'm actually working on the next thing right now. But I can't talk about that because obviously it's uh, it's way off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope to have you back to talk about it. That, that sound. Um, uh, I'm really excited about this book, and uh, and uh, congratulations, and I'm and I'm happy. This is also I'm, I'm. It's amazing. It's also all the proceeds. Most or most of the proceeds are going to charity. You said. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. All of them. So, oh, that's so. fantastic. Wow. Well, um, uh, thank you, James. Is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up? No, no, I think that's um, that's good. It was great talking to you. Oh, same here. Um, so viewers, thank you for hearing or watching this uh, this video. Again, I'll put all the information in the link in the description below, so you can link to this to this uh, PDF and soon to be POD. And uh, yes, be safe, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.